So hi, today uh, we will talk about power uh, semiconductor devices. So up to up to now we have talked you know, about uh, ideal switches, but today I would like to uh, talk about the implementation and non-ideal properties of those devices. So first uh, we will start with the diode. So here you see a, a classical uh, diode, probably you have seen one of those things. And if the current rating increases, uh, you can also see one of uh, those uh, screw type uh, diodes. So basically all that body is one terminal where you fix it with a screw and the current is uh, coming from the other side, those uh, in general called uh, power diodes. And you can even get uh, much bigger versions of those things. So if you just uh, look at a ideal diode, of course we have the you know anode and the cathode and if we apply a positive voltage uh, through anode so our diode becomes forward biased and once it is forward biased it is uh, like a you know simple switch and it becomes conducting the current and then the current flows in that direction when it is uh, forward biased however if you apply a negative voltage if you would like to uh, uh, get some current in the opposite direction through the cathode our ideal diode will immediately become an open circuit and it, it is called reverse bias when it is reverse biased uh, in an ideal diode current is actually zero and when it is uh, forward bias basically the forward voltage is zero but of course this is just for the ideal diode and the transition you know the transition from off to on state is uh, zero so it can simultaneously change its status from open circuit to closed circuit but of course in a real application uh, that is not the case and today uh, we will talk about you know what are those factors and what are the effects on our uh, circuits so again if you look at the VA characteristics of a diode what you will see I mean the, the same thing we talked before uh, if you try to apply a forward voltage when you apply uh, apply a forward voltage you cannot get into this region but instead you will just stay at the zero voltage but the current will increase so in this region it is conducting okay in this region it is conducting or forward uh, bias region and similarly if you apply a reverse voltage where you are reverse biasing your current and your forward voltage now stuck in zero current so it is you know that kind of a perpendicular shape so you are working in that lines uh, just for the ideal diet so how does it uh, changes if we just uh, draw that circuit with a practical uh, diet so before that uh, let's define a couple of important parameters first we have the forward voltage so forward voltage is the voltage okay when it is carrying some current of course we will have some voltage uh, in the diode and that is called the forward voltage and then we have the reverse breakdown voltage uh, yes when you apply a negative voltage here let's say you apply a thousand volts through here so then the current will be zero maybe you can i mean it is working at 100 volts but if it is let's say thousand volts maybe it will uh, just damage your uh, diode and it will start uh, conducting so it is the maximum voltage level that you can hold you know without damaging uh, your voltage is the reverse breakdown voltage and we have the on resistance of course uh, it is when it is on when it is on uh, the voltage drop or it is not an ideal conductor so it can behave like a resistance i mean it's not an actual resistance but uh, due to voltage drop you can model it like that and we will uh, talk about those things and of course uh, on the transient state on the transient state you have the uh, turn on and off times and the transition from forward to reverse recovery or vice versa they are not like uh, simultaneous they are not instantaneous so it can take some time to turn on your diode or turn off your diode and actually when you increase your uh, frequencies up to some values then you will have uh, you will have problems you know if, if it is not ideal and if you are uh, working at hundreds of kilohertz range 
then you can uh, start having uh, some problems. So let's implement those things to the same circuit we have before. So instead of that uh, graphic, so I will modify it. So in the ideal case, we have that uh, waveform, but now it is a more complex waveform. So let's start looking through here. So if you are applying a forward voltage, if you are applying a forward voltage and your uh, diode is getting into the conduction mode, right? So you will have some forward voltage and that forward voltage can be a few, a few volts. Okay, and this is the forward bias region and you will have a couple of, uh, usually that uh, voltage is uh, kind of increasing with some current up to some point. And then this is the knee point. So that is like the minimum voltage that you need to minimum forward voltage that you need to apply to turn on your diode. And it is, you know, normal for normal diodes is around 0.7 volts, around one volts. But for germanium diodes, it's much lower around 0.3 volts. So this is the region that it becomes uh, conducting mode. Okay, and if you go to other state, so here uh, in the previous one, let me draw it. So the ideal characteristics was something like that. Okay, so when it is reverse bias, so that region was the reverse bias region, I assume the circuit, uh, the diode becomes uh, open circuit, but actually there is like a really, really small current flowing in the reverse direction, even if it is a reverse bias. And we call that um, that thing leakage current. So there's a leakage current that is usually in the range of uh, microamps. So it is not that important for our analysis in the, in the power uh, electronics area, but there are some cases which you need to consider that one. And that one is more important for us. So you can um, block the voltage up to some value. And if you try to apply a larger voltage, Usually, I mean, if it is within the limits, you can, you know, it can be repetitive. Your uh, diodes can survive from that one. But if it is beyond some value, it will uh, damage uh, your circuit and you will, your circuit, your semiconductor uh, things get into the breakdown or avalanche region, which probably you can remember uh, from the semiconductor uh, course. Okay. So here are a couple of, uh, diodes, we will talk about those data sheets. So I advise you to uh, download those PDFs and you can uh, refer it uh, when I'm when you are watching this video. And I will show you details about uh, that uh, data sheets at the end of uh, video. Okay, so if you look at the diode, of course, you can uh, see from it's, it's, it's a two junction, uh, P junction and N junction. So we have a PN junction here, it's a semiconductor device. So the important thing is whenever you have a two junction, you have some kind of uh, capacitance, okay, between that one. So when you are, you know, forwarding, when you are getting some uh, current from here, first you need to uh, move those charges, okay, you need to either deplete or uh, dop those charges. And actually that gives the main idea about the characteristics of a diode. So let's talk about uh, those things. So when it is in the forward bias mode, when it is in the forward bias mode, so basically your uh, current is flowing through that one. So it is in the you know conductivity modulation range and you are basically um, injecting some minor to carry. So it, these you know P regions are getting into N region and then it becomes uh, into the conducting mode. Then, I mean, of course the idea is, I mean, in an ideal switch, remember the turn on or turn off uh, times are zero. So it is just in instantaneous uh, switching. But in a practical diode, because of that uh, charges, or you can think it as a, as a uh, capacitance, we have to carry for some current, okay, to charge those regions, then after it will uh, become, get into the conducting mode. So if you look at it in the time axis, what will happen? So here at first we were at the off region. So our voltage was negative. Then we have some current. Then 
you start carrying some current and due to that current basically the voltage you know the capacitance uh, voltage now increases then it will uh, just sees a, a peak value so in it for in the first region we have in the charge depletion region then now at that point we have like in the forward bias region and we can now uh, supply charge uh, to reduce the own resistance and now there's an overshoot here then after that transition now we will have a low on resistance and at that region basically the switching is completed and we can use the steady state uh, properties of the diet so basically I mean this is kind of exaggerated but we will have some kind of transition uh, from off to on and the same thing happens and the other one actually uh, more important for our analysis then we will have the turn of transient so in this region so here again uh, we are at the on region so you can see you are at the on region because you are carrying some uh, current positive current and the forward voltage is not directly zero but I don't know maybe 0 0.7 volts or something like that you are carrying a small uh, amount of forward voltage then after that point you are trying to turn off your diode so basically uh, current starts reducing okay but the current is reducing now the important thing is normally what you what you expect is you know current if this is ID you are carrying some current then it will take some time and go like that and you can say this is off region this is on region okay so this is the transition region but actually what is happening is we are starting with a positive current and then the current reduces but instead of just you know being stopped uh, at the zero current actually it makes a dip and makes a comeback and goes in the opposite direction so that region is quite important so that is what you see again it is kind of exaggerated but now you are at the negative region but similarly uh, from the previous thing so now our charges have to move in the opposite direction so I can uh, cut the conducting mode and our uh, PN junction basically isolate that thing so in order to do that I need to get rid of those chargers and in order to get rid of those chargers I need to uh, carry some current in the opposite direction so that is uh, what's happening there so you are basically carrying some uh, negative current and if you integrate that area as a second that gives you the charge okay so you are getting rid of all those charges and now your diode gets into the reverse bias case okay and it is now in the charge depletion region and since you need to move to a negative voltage and since the you know that PN junction can be uh, taught as a capacitance so you need to uh, get into uh, you need to change the capacitor voltage so you need to give even more charge in the negative uh, region so that is why it takes some time so all that you know all that time it, we will see that quite a lot uh, this is called the reverse recovery okay reverse recovery and in that range okay the time is important and that's a important parameter in our data sheets and also you can find another uh, value so it is the reverse recovery current so how deep you can get into that value because uh, in that region if you think about your circuit so you put your diode to prevent any reverse current but for even if for a short amount of time you are getting some negative current so if that region if that charge requirement is large okay if Q is large so your diode is kind of a, a slow diode or if that reverse recovery time is uh, small so your diode is called as you know fast diode or ultra fast diode and that uh, that characteristics limit how fast you can uh, turn on or turn off your uh, switch because we will see in a couple of slides that uh, that charge directly affect your uh, switching losses.
okay so in the turn of transit again reverse current is required to remove carrier charges so you need to draw some uh, negative current and the amount of those uh, charges or those capacitances uh, determine the characteristics of our diode okay so here again this is a simplified uh, version so you have the forward current now it will uh, get into the zero and from that zero to totally completing okay it is usually you know not uh, all time but it is usually considered as 25 percent of to the peak reverse recovery current anyway that time is called the reverse recovery time usually shown with trr reverse recovery and the maximum or let's say minimum uh, value in the reverse direction is called the irr reverse recovery current and these two you know that characteristics and that characteristics uh, show you, you know, how fast is your diode so i will i will show you those things in the data sheet okay so again uh, i mean you will see those things in some data sheets i mean it's not really important in this stage but uh, in your professional life you can see those uh, those terms so there's uh, two recovery types so there's soft recovery or abrupt recovery so in the soft recovery you will reach the reverse recovery uh, current then it just goes with a kind of smooth uh, waveform and in abrupt recovery so you have reached some current and it will just you know quickly uh, recovers and you will have really i mean if you compare that one and that one uh, trr here in, the, in that one is uh, much s smaller so due to that that thing you know it's much uh, faster you can have a couple of transients so there are some applications where you don't want that kind of high frequency oscillations but then you have to live with a, a slower diode or you can force uh, to have a faster uh, re reverse recovery you know which will uh, limit the uh, switching losses and that kind of things but that can induce some high frequency oscillations in your circuit either you know you can have emi problems or voltage inducing problems you can have a look at those things and there's a there's a term that's defining how, how soft is the recovery that's called the softness factor and you can i advise you to have a look at uh, those links as well okay so if we look at the types of power diodes uh, there are a couple of types first of all you know it's the standard uh, diodes probably the diodes you have seen so far they are like standard recovery again you know if you are dealing with a, a low frequency application you don't need uh, that kind of fast diodes anyway so standard recoveries are uh, there are more uh, options and usually they are cheaper so if the cost is more important for you you can choose one of those uh, standard recovery diodes then you have the fast or similarly ultra fast recovery diodes and depending on your uh, switching frequency or your operation frequency you know fast you can use fast or even ultra fast recovery diodes i mean for the topologies that we have seen so we have uh, seen line line commutated line commutated uh, rectifiers so every diode is getting into the conduction mode or uh, off mode like as a multiple of uh, 50 hertz 60 hertz so it is uh, like really low frequency so in that kind of ac to dc diode rectification you usually don't need fast diodes so you can just get a standard recovery diodes but for example if you are using a dc dc converter we will see those things in the following weeks uh, maybe your uh, converter is operating 1 kilohertz 10 kilohertz or 100 kilohertz so the diode gets into the on and off states like 100,000 times in a second so then the speed of the diodes becomes really important so in that kind of applications you need to use fast or ultra fast uh, diodes okay then there's the shocky diodes so those are interesting and again i advise you to watch uh, that video first so they are uh, they are majority carrier devices so they have uh, the insulation barrier with a metal layer so because of that one 
they don't have to you know charge or they don't know they don't have to move those charges from p junction to n junction because of that they don't have any reverse recovery times they are you know fastest and they don't have uh, losses due to reverse recovery uh, in the switching states but unfortunately uh, they are not applicable to the really high voltages again that layer is, is not capable of uh, blocking high voltages so they are uh, kind of limited to low voltage electronics so you cannot uh, find choky diode for a thousand volts application or so okay so uh, it's here uh, let's have a look at a couple of uh, slides okay so here first we have a fast recovery uh, rectifier okay so we have 1 and uh, 39 13 so probably you have seen those 1 and series it is like the uh, standard series so we have here 400 volts okay that is the uh, rated maximum blocking voltage reverse voltage and that one is like a 30 amp uh, diode and forward voltage forward voltage when the diode is on okay so you will have around 1.1 volts when it is conducting okay and you can quickly calculate if if that one is carrying if that one is carrying let's say 30 amps and if that forward voltage is 1.1 volts that thing some uh, that diode dissipates some uh, conduction loss okay and conduction loss is uh, voltage times current so you can see that will produce at rated current uh, that will produce around 33 watts while the diode is in conduction okay when it is off you will not have the conduction losses but depending on the speed of uh, fast uh, fast to uh, sorry switching from on state to off stage you will have the switching losses and here you can see the time required uh, for reverse recovery is around 400 nanoseconds 400 nanoseconds okay that's quite again you know kind of fast so here we have a different we have a different uh, diode this one has capability of blocking a much higher voltage and a much higher current but how we are paying this advantage is you can see the forward voltage is doubled so instead of 1.1 volts you are having 2.2 uh, volts and again instead of 400 nanoseconds you have 2000 nanoseconds uh, at the reverse recovery so yes that diode is capable of carrying more current and it's capable of blocking a higher voltage but during uh, the conduction time you will have uh, twice uh, for the same current you will have twice the power loss and it will uh, take almost like uh, five times longer so you will have a, a longer uh, switching transient and it will uh, create a higher uh, switching loss so here are like ultra fast uh, rectifiers ultra fast diodes so here you can see the you know order of magnitude so this one again is quite uh, fast but that one is like 2000 nanoseconds now we are talking around 35 nanoseconds or 60 nanoseconds okay those diodes are much faster uh, than that one but what is the catch uh, i mean that one i mean it is the fastest one but again it has the minimum uh, blocking voltage and like minimum uh, the rated current i mean again the forward voltage you, you see yes it is changing but it is not uh, that much so the idea is basically in order to carry in order to carry uh, more current you make your junctions bigger okay and in order to uh, make your uh, breaking uh, reverse blocking voltage higher you make the ju junctions longer okay you increase the distance from your uh, pn junctions terminals so again if you think about the characteristics of a uh, of a capacitor if you make those junctions bigger larger or longer you are all affecting the capacitance value and that all affects the reverse recovery uh, characteristics and how much charge you need to carry to get uh, from on state to off state okay again uh, if you look at those things here yes i can carry 
higher voltage and I can block a higher I can carry a higher current and I can block a higher voltage but that one I mean it's quite fast yes but unfortunately this one has a quite high uh, forward voltage so the conduction power loss I mean if this one is carrying 100 amps at 2.6 volts so that can uh, dissipate 260 watts of heat just from conduction so again depending on your application if you are if switching loss is not that important but if your uh, conduction loss is more, more more important you need to compare like many uh, many components and you need to choose the best option and again usually you know these are uh, these are much expensive than the you know fast recovery and these fast recovery ones are even more expensive than the normal diodes so you need to you know you have the cost performance efficiency you know that kind of uh, parameters as an engineer you need to compare and choose the best option and we have the Ch Chotki diodes okay in those diodes as you can see you know I'm behind but there's no reverse recovery so you don't have any switching transition you don't need to carry any charges from P to N junction and again uh, you can see those have usually smaller forward voltages okay those have usually smaller forward voltages but as you can see here you know it is uh, much lower voltages so it can block up to 30 volts so if you cannot use that diode in a uh, grid application okay and the same here so the voltages are uh, kind of uh, low but again if you are working at a low voltage DC DC converter or in other application if it is your if it is within your range then you can uh, have a look at uh, those diodes as well okay so again let's uh, compare the V max and V forward I and mean, you can again uh, increase the maximum voltage but forward voltage is increasing I mean here you can have a look at from here to here of course the currents are changing but you can see the trend here or I mean here like even you know the current is now reduced from 60 to 30 but the forward voltage is increased even more so forward voltage okay is usually proportional with your maximum blocking voltage so if you want to block a higher voltage you are paying that with increased forward voltage and increase uh, conduction losses okay so now uh, let's see you know a practical uh, diode this is the first link that i just showed you so this is just a, a pdf of that diode so this is a ultra fast recovery you know 1200 volts diode usually you know you have i don't know how many pages that one eight pages i mean you can even get a longer uh, that's a sheet usually the first pages or first two pages give most of the information you require so you know get a habit of like opening a data sheet and getting like most of the information from that one and it will be useful it will be useful for your hardware projects as well anyway if you look at if you look at that diode the first thing that says us the rated current so that diode is capable of carrying 60 amps and the maximum uh, blocking voltage is 1200 volts okay tj is the junction temperature we will talk about that one so the internal uh, pn junction temperature so it can go up to 175 celsius so in usual uh, power diodes it is the region that range it can be 150 180 but it is usually in this range and forward voltage when that one is in conduction it is 1.3 volts again those data just give you some basic information of course that forward voltage uh, slightly changes with current and we will see that thing in the following slides and the reverse recovery reverse recovery time is you know it says typical that one says typical so it changes with current and other operating conditions but it is around 50 nanoseconds so that is a quite uh, fast uh, diet okay and again that description just give you an idea if that uh, diode is suitable for your application or not it says ultra fast okay soft recovery so the time 
it takes it is a soft recovery so it net it doesn't cause a high frequency oscillations very low conduction and switching losses yes we will uh, look at that one i mean forward voltage is not that low but anyway so high frequency or high pulse current operation high reverse current voltage capability 1200 volts high junction temperature 175 volts okay so whatever blah 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 industrial so applications power supplies motor control mission critical systems blah 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 freewheeling it says auxiliary functions it can be snubber boot strap we will uh, talk about that one okay anyway so this is the first page and you know i can get most of the information i need so let's move to our next page again here you know most of the data are repeated so 1200 volts rms forward current yes average forward current when the definition of delta can be found here is around 6 amps but if you are carrying an ac current uh, then the rms or maybe uh, other frequencies it can go up to 8 amps okay and the interesting thing is it can have a repetitive peak forward current up to 500 amps okay so it is rated for 60 amps but it can carry 500 amps but what is the catch the period or the peak time will be i mean the pulse actually i think it's a pulse so the time of the pulse should be lower than five microseconds so at the end of the day the current limitation is because of thermal if there's too much current okay the pn junction gets heated up and you destroy your diode but even if that current is very high i mean almost 10 times higher than the rated value but if the uh, time is short then it may not cause a time uh, it may not cause a damage okay there's also search non-repetitive forward current if this is like a, a sinusoidal or something like that again for maximum of 10 milliseconds you can go to 400 amps okay so storage temperatures 60 uh, minus 65 to 175 so 175 is the critical one and there's the thermal i mean we will talk about that in the following weeks in the thermal design that is also uh, really uh, critical so let me go here so in that one it is junction to case uh, thermal uh, resistance and it is 0 0.6 and i just would like to emphasize the unit the unit is celsius per watt okay and this is 0 0.6 celsius per watt so somehow you just calculate the losses and let's say if that one is carrying 100 watts okay 100 watts then that one cancels and that will give you a 60 celsius so that means if my you know conduction loss switching loss if all those things are 100 watts that will increase my diode temperature 60 celsius on top of the ambient temperature so if ambient is uh, 25 celsius then the diode will operate at 85 uh, celsius so anyway we will uh, talk about that uh, thermal design in the upcoming weeks okay so let's look at the other characteristics it's electrical characteristics or so reverse leakage currents so when it is when it is uh, reverse biased okay so there will be some really small current in the opposite direction and you know it increases with uh, temperature at 25 celsius it is around 30 microamps so it is you know it can be ignored for our applications but anyway but however if you just increase your operating temperature to 120 celsius and when the voltage is at maximum it can go up to 300 uh, microamps 0 0.3 uh, milliamps again it is uh, kind of uh, small and for forward voltage drop again remember in the first page it says at 1.3 volts forward voltage but it was typical okay so don't uh, blindly use uh, that that data because it is you know it is the best value in this table it should operate the forward voltage i mean the interesting is forward voltage gets smaller 
uh, with uh, with temperature okay so it's, it has a negative temperature coefficient and we will talk about that one okay and as if you are operating at 25 celsius and if it, the forward voltage is 2.25 okay almost you know double of that value and if the temperature goes to 125 then it can be like 1.35 to 2.05 and it is you know proportional with current we can see more data but anyway uh, the thing is if your operating temperature is lower so you will uh, create a higher uh, conduction loss so you shouldn't just use 1.30 volts and uh, use it in your uh, simulations directly okay so anyway let's uh, continue and what we have here we have the reverse recovery time okay trr is the reverse recovery time again there are like different cases and the reverse recovery time again you can see the general uh, trend here usually they put the best value to the front page so it was i think 50 nanoseconds but the catch is uh, for 15 nanoseconds uh, there are some uh, limitations for df over dt the current rate of change the temperature voltage so on so if the rate of the voltage rate of change is lower i mean if the current is reducing at a sol slower uh, speed you will have a reverse recovery up to 125 uh, nanoseconds okay 2.5 times higher than the best value anyway for the reverse recovery current again you know you can go up to 32 amps so remember this is a you know diode like that and reverse recovery current is in that direction so if this is a uh, time so you can go up to and here and this number says i can go up to minus 45 amps so you put your diode to be like a switch like it cannot uh, draw any negative current but for short amount of time for reverse recovery time and we are talking about nanoseconds here but still you can have up to minus 45 amps in the negative direction so that can you know be quite destructive on the other components so you need to be careful about those things anyway so again there's the softness factor uh, softness factor was one forward recovery time and it is you know from uh, off state to on state transition so this is 750 nanoseconds forward recovery voltage remember it just makes a uh, makes a peak then goes down to uh, around one volt whatever so it can go up to 4.5 volts in the positive direction okay and the rest is you know some detailed uh, graphs i mean every company has uh, different graphics different different representations but you can find uh, useful information so you don't have to calculate for example conduction losses yourself uh, you can get the duty cycle of your uh, uh, current if this is for uh, delta is equal to one is like continuous current so this is 50 percent on blah 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 it goes like that so you can find your current value and you can basically calculate how much power the diode will uh, dissipate for conduction and you can uh, calculate the efficiency and that kind of things and forward forward voltage we have those things i mean all other uh, detailed information are here peak reverse recovery current versus uh, the current uh, slope and so on so on softness factor parameters and again junction capacitance that i mean that can be important if you are putting into the simulations so you can model uh, your diode uh, with uh, parasitic components like that and uh, junction capacitance and that one you know is changing again with respect to your voltage okay as your voltage gets bigger the capacitance gets smaller so here again i mean that can be important for hardware implementation or when you are uh, building your pcbs so there are some standards relating the packages so that package is do247 so this is a standard 
uh, package probably the circuit uh, printed circuit board designing software usually have those package anyways but anyway if you want to uh, get all those dimensions they are all given what is the length what is the diameter of those holes blah 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 so you can find all those all those information and the packet package can be you know smaller larger and it is important and again the revisions and other things okay so every company has like different data sheets but please you know it is really important i think for uh, power electronics area to have some uh, familiarity with the practical uh, data sheet so i advise you to have a look at different companies and uh, diodes and in your hardware project you have to compare like many many switches many different companies so it is i think a good habit to start reading a data sheet anyway let's uh, talk about some uh, losses about your uh, diodes so the first one is uh, the conduction losses okay and conduction losses is the losses while you have the diode okay and you have your current flowing in the forward direction and you have your vf here and of course you have some voltage forward voltage and some current and basically uh, the conduction losses is you know vf forward voltage times the conduction losses and you, it increases with current you know not only because that relation but uh, usually the forward voltage can also uh, change with the current so you need to be careful with that one okay and again another important part is uh, if i mean a common mistake sometimes you make it in the exams or in your hardware projects as well let's say uh, this is current and i don't know let's say this is 10 amps okay and your diode is on for 50% uh, of the time okay and for 50% of the time it is off okay so the d2 cycle is 0 0.5 so i mean if the current is 10 amps and let's say uh, forward voltage is 1 volt so it is not just you know one you cannot just multiply that one and that one and they say it is around 10 watts because it is you know zero watts i'm talking about the conduction here it is zero watts here 10 watts here so the average you need to calculate the average you can either uh, multiply it with the due to cycle or get an average of the current whatever but if the diode is becoming on and off don't forget to you know you need to just include that part okay so conduction losses are uh, easy to calculate and if you are working at a low frequency they are uh, the dominant uh, loss factor but if you are uh, getting into the higher frequencies the kilohertz range or tens of hundreds of kilohertz range usually the conducting losses uh, can be small compared to switching losses okay this is the other loss uh, that we have in the in the diodes so that is the loss okay again i mean i will just for simplicity so you will have the volts and you will have the current okay so once it is blocking or once it is you know if it is turning on it will be something like that for example then again it depends on the uh, inductance parameters so in that region okay when you multiply voltage and current it will be some uh, power loss and that thing is called the switching loss okay there are some methods uh, to calculate those things in some data sheets in in some data sheets switching losses are uh, given in as a function of current or as a function of uh, switching frequency but in general if your diodes gets slower okay so it takes more time to turn on or turn off as a result you will have a higher uh, switching loss okay so that is the reason why for high frequencies we would like to use a ultra fast diode or fast diode because we want to minimize that transition time because the switching losses occurs and uh, those transition times once the transition is complete from on to off or off to on then you have uh, just the uh, conduction losses okay 
So again, I mean power is you know per uh, energy per second. Okay, if you are let's say dissipating one joules in one uh, switching frequency, so you know, and that defines like how many times. So if you are switching at one kilohertz. So that means you are losing that energy 1000 times a second. So you need to multiply uh, that energy with the, with the uh, switching frequency or how many times you are switching. And that just gives you the power. So you can uh, quickly guess the switching losses increases with uh, operating frequency. Okay. So here is the simplest uh, waveform. So it is a linear system. Again, you know, those things can be given in the data sheet. But anyway, just have a look at that one. So here we have the off and we have the on. Again, these are uh, kind of exaggerated. So here we want to, you know, turn on our uh, diode. So at first, I mean, this should be negative, but it's shown like that. So now the, the voltage getting into zero this is linearized model so it's simplified and our current uh, climbs and gets into some value so again power power is vd times i here so if you think here again i'm ignoring the conduction losses i don't have any current i have some voltage but this one is zero and if you multiply that one that is uh, zero but here in this region Basically, I have some increase and now it is reducing. So here I have the, I mean, this one is uh, turn on energy. Okay. In some data sheets, they are given in joules, millijoules, whatever. Okay. So this is the turn on energy. And I mean, this is the same for MOSFETs and other uh, semiconductor devices. So it is uh, useful to get familiar with those terminology and then what we have here is we want to you know turn off uh, our uh, device I think it's not even a uh, diode because it is uh, it's getting a control signal anyway uh, now our current is reducing okay gets to zero and it can get like a reverse recovery but anyway this simplified now the voltage is it was zero or forward voltage now it's getting into the blocking mode and now we need to multiply that one so that area is the turn of energy okay again that is given in joules so you can calculate the turn on and turn of energy for any semiconductor device again it can be a MOSFET or thyristor then it is the you know how much energy you lose per one switching and if your switching frequency is one kilohertz you are making that for 1000 times then you are multiplying uh, you are adding those two energies and multiply it 1000 and that gives you your switching power losses okay so i advise uh, you to read those uh, reading materials there are uh, nice information about that one and in order to calculate the power losses uh, wait a couple of more weeks and once we are uh, talking about the thermal design uh, we will have uh, detailed calculations for switching and conduction losses but at least for now i think it's good understanding what are the uh, factors changing from an ideal di diode and what are the effects of those uh, non-ideal parameters to the overall circuit.